Antarctica is the coldest, windiest, and driest continent on Earth. The average annual temperature at the highest parts of the interior is about minus 60 degrees Celsius. But even that is not cold enough to store Pfizer's new vaccine. The vaccine, developed in conjunction with German biotech company BioNTech, is said to have an effectiveness rating of about 95%, but with one major caveat. It has to be stored at minus 70 degrees Celsius. As Time Magazine put it, that's cold enough to turn your ice cream into an impenetrable block of ice. Obviously, this will cause a logistical nightmare. Delivering the vaccine to hot countries in the developing world may become problematic. Luckily for the dry ice manufacturers, dry ice comes at a nice frosty temperature of minus 78 degrees, perfectly suitable for transporting and storing Pfizer's new vaccine. But obviously, this involves more cost. Even for the local GP or pharmacy in the Western world, temperatures of minus 70 degrees Celsius aren't exactly easy to come by. Unless doctors are willing to fork out the $10,000 to $15,000 required for a specialised freezer, their only option is to use dry ice by storing the vaccine in a thermal box for up to two weeks and refilling the dry ice every five days. So why all of this coldness? Why does the vaccine need to be kept so cold? Well, the vaccine uses a novel technology, strands of messenger RNA mRNA, held within lipid particles that are vulnerable to degradation at room temperature and require doses to be frozen for transportation, then thawed for use. This type of vaccine does not put a weakened or inactivated virus into your body, but rather teaches your cells how to make a protein that triggers an immune response. Anyway, the UK have approved the vaccine, which is set to be rolled out next week, with Boris Johnson stating that there will be immense logistical challenges due to the frigid temperatures required to store the vaccine. Plus, the vaccine requires each person to get two injections three weeks apart, meaning it will take some months before all the most vulnerable are protected. According to the UK government's very own document, one titled Information for UK Recipients on Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, published 2nd of December 2020, the vaccine is not recommended for everyone. Regarding children, the document states that the mRNA vaccine BNT162b2 is not recommended for children under 16 years, with no explanation given. Regarding pregnant women, it states that you should ask your doctor or pharmacist for advice before you receive this vaccine, and as a precaution, you should avoid becoming pregnant until at least two months after the vaccine. One question that pops to mind is, if airlines like Qantas are going to mandate that their passengers have to be vaccinated before travelling overseas, does that mean children will be exempt? Or are children not going to be allowed to fly? Hopefully, common sense will prevail. Of course, as with any medication, there are potential side effects, things like headache, muscle pain, chills, fever, nausea, feeling unwell. So for at least some people, it will be pretty much just like having the actual virus, without actually having the virus. There is one rare side effect that the UK government chose not to mention, as it only affects 1 in 1,000 people — death. But just for completeness, I'll include it in this presentation. By the way, that last one was a joke. The vaccine does not cause death. Yet. I found it amusing how British politician Alec Sharma sent out a tweet stating, "...the UK was the first country to sign a deal with Pfizer-BioNTech. Now we will be the first to deploy their vaccine. To everyone involved in this breakthrough, thank you. In years to come, we will remember this moment as the day the UK led humanity's charge against this disease." Unsurprisingly, this tweet was widely panned. For one, Pfizer is an American company. BioNTech is German, the vaccine will be produced in Belgium due to the facility being moved from the UK due to Brexit. But of course, the UK politicians are the brave ones by leading the charge by handing over taxpayer money. Anyway, that's it for me. The key point is the cold. If and when you get the vaccine, make sure you think of the mountainous interior of Antarctica when the mRNA enters your veins. Cheers!